My name is Najma Brown, and I'm an attorney and advocate for humanity. My name is Tariq Ansar Keel, and I am the convener for Direct Action 2020. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Katrina Hassan Hamilton. I am the executive director of United Shades of Black and Brown, which is a nonprofit organization that seeks to eradicate racism in schools here in California and throughout the United States. You probably have seen what I've seen, a cycle. Some tremendous, outrageous act is perpetrated against an African-American, and it's either on the six o'clock news or captured by someone's cell phone. And there's a tremendous outcry and People are in the streets raising their voice and there's great outrage. And then we have a period where it seems that so-called cooler heads prevail. And finally, we return to abnormal. How can organizations like IMPAC that are founded and led by non-African American Muslims effectively engage African American Muslims in the work that they do? Look at your existing programs. IMPACT, for example, has two phenomenal programs that engage young people. The first is the Youth Leadership Summit, and the second one is the Congressional Leadership Development Program, an amazing program pre-COVID that allowed young people, young Muslims, to go out to Washington, D.C. to shadow congressional leaders. Non-Black Muslim organizations must make an effort to diversify their boards and include Black Muslims. Non-Black Muslim organizations must have programming that specifically targets Black Muslims. Engage our young people to let them know that their voices do matter. Make a concerted effort to diversify your board. When I look at all of these organizations, there are one or two drops of African Americans on their boards. We must do better. Direct Action 2020 has decided to partner with IMPAC in order to have access to decades of experience in legislative research and interaction and with access to their subject matter experts. This, we believe, will further our efforts collectively toward addressing systemic racism and many of the other inequities facing people of color in this country. We must get rid of our imperialistic ways of thinking. We have to get rid of that antiquated belief that uh, caste systems still exist because caste systems do not exist in Al-Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that we are all created equal. The thing that separates us are our deeds. It's interesting. When Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, arrived in Medina, he did three things in quick succession. The first is he established where the masjid would be, where the house of worship and religious education would emanate from. The second thing is he established open air markets. The third thing he did is he paired up one Ansar and one Mahajarun together for them to act and interact as brothers. If we look at the landscape of the United States of America, we have masajid everywhere across the country. And we haven't done too bad in the proliferation of Muslim businesses, but we've stumbled and struggled for many years on that third part, that cooperative relationship between the Ansar, the indigenous African-American Muslim, and the Mahajarun, our non-black Muslim brothers and sisters in America. It's up to our organizations to act like you know, scouts who pre-COVID go out to these schools and recruit these athletes. They look for the best and the brightest. We need to do the same because we have amazing young people in the African-American Muslim community, and they just need to be given an opportunity to blossom and to shine. Assalamu alaikum.